Karnataka announces UGNET 2022 mock seat allotment result. UGC handing out fellowship and scholarship amounts through DBT. Primary schools in Delhi to reopen tomorrow. India informs China of new norms for Indian medical students studying in Chinese colleges. IIT Roorkee researchers discover three antiviral molecules to treat COVID-19. Good afternoon and a warm welcome. You're watching Education News Network where we get into the latest developments in education at the top of this hour. This is Nitya reporting from ANN and the daily stories are the Karnataka Examinations Authority, that is KEA, announced the NET UG 2022 mock seat allotment result yesterday, that is November 7th. Students can access the result at the KEA website kea.kar.nic.in. They will have to use their CET roll numbers to access the result. Candidates will be required to verify their allotted seat status on the website. They also have the option to change, reorder, delete and add to their choices of courses and colleges as per their preference. According to an official statement, all the candidates must enter their final options before the last date prescribed. Candidates will not be able to change their options after the last date and time fixed to do so. Even though the candidates may not like to modify the options after the mock allotment, a statement on the KEA website stated they may not get the same seat during the real allotment as other candidates may change their earlier entered options. The University Grants Commission is giving out fellowship and scholarship amounts through a bank portal integrated with the Public Financial Management System for direct benefit transfer payments, as announced by the panel's chairperson M. Jagdish Kumar on Monday. The Scholarship and Fellowship Management Portal for Disbursement of Amounts has been developed by Canberra Bank, he said. Recently, the UGC has introduced new enhancements in the portal, such as linking initiation by the scholar, monthly payment confirmation initiation by scholar, tracking module, grievance module, and onboarding academic user, Mr. Kumar said, adding that payments to awardees are generated automatically on the portal for all awardees linked by university institution college based on monthly confirmation of candidates by the university institution or college concerned on the designation web portal scholarship.camerabank.in. The primary schools in Delhi will reopen tomorrow, that is Wednesday, November 9th. The decision was taken in a high-level meeting chaired by the Environment Minister Gopal Rai. He said, primary schools in Delhi were closed and open activities of classes senior to them were stopped. From 9th November, primary schools will open and the ban on open activities is being lifted. The Ahmadmi Party government had announced the closure of primary schools and work from home for 50% of its staff as the pollution levels in Delhi reached the severe category on Friday. We are taking all steps to control the pollution situation. In light of that, we're shutting down all primary schools in Delhi from tomorrow. Also shutting down outdoor activities for all classes above class 5, said Arvind Keshrival. Several schools in Delhi welcomed the government's decision on holding online classes for primary grades. The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights had recently asked the Delhi government to shut schools until the city's air quality improves. India has informed China of the recent stringent regulations released by the National Medical Commission for Indian students studying in Chinese medical colleges to obtain permission to practice back home and asked authorities to ensure that the students are qualified to comply with the new rules. In September last year, the Indian Embassy in Beijing issued a detailed advisory for prospective Indian students wanting to study medicine in China, cautioning them of pitfalls, including poor pass percentage, mandatory learning of Putonghua, and strict norms to qualify to practice in India. According to official estimates, over 23,000 Indian students are currently enrolled in Chinese universities. A vast majority of them were studying medicine. After more than two years of COVID visa restrictions, China recently started issuing visas to select a number of students to return. Over 350 students have now returned to rejoin their colleges, according to sources. The Indian Embassy has issued a comprehensive advisory on September 10, highlighting stringent norms they face to qualify for practice in India, which included obtaining a license to practice in China. The embassy in its press release yesterday said it has informed the Chinese authorities concerned and medical colleges 
with a request that they ensure that all Indian students coming to China for clinical medicine programs are educated, trained and facilitated so that they can fulfill the above requirements of NMC. Any student who joins a clinical medicine program in China after November 2021 and fails to obtain a license to practice as a medical doctor in China will be rendered ineligible to appear for foreign medical graduate examination, it said. The students and their parents are requested to see the Gazette notification dated November 18, 2021 by the NMC. The embassy has also approached relevant Chinese authorities to confirm that Indian students can work in Chinese hospitals in a capacity such as assistant doctors. Another related query was whether Indian students can work in Chinese hospitals in a capacity such as assistant doctors after completing their medical education in China but failed to obtain a medical practitioner license in China so as to enable them to earn a living and pay back their education loans. In its advisory issued in September, the Indian Embassy said only 16% of the Indian students passed between 2015 to 2021 will qualify to practice in India. Researchers from IIT Durki have discovered antiviral compounds that can be used to treat COVID-19 infections successfully. Through medication repurposing, computational and antiviral experimental tests, the researchers discovered three such antiviral compounds. The COVID-19 pandemic forced the world to undertake both computational and experimental studies in order to comprehend the structure and makeup of the SARS-CoV-2 viral proteins and create vaccines and treatments for it. To understand the atomic structures of the virus and the proteins that make up the virus, structure function studies are a crucial area of research. The Protein Data Bank, a database of the structures of proteins and viruses, is now accessible as a result of these studies. The PDP Data Bank is utilized by researchers all over the world to find new drugs. For clinical testing and potential use as antiviral medicines, the IIT Rurki team is doing drug repurposing research on SARS-CoV-2 compounds based on protein structures. Speaking on the importance of such research, Professor K.K. Pant, director of IIT Rurki, said, Such research into SARS-CoV-2 virus is critical not only to deal with COVID-19 pandemic, but also prepare for any new variants and future pandemics as well. This research can provide valuable inputs to the scientific community to understand such viruses and develop vaccines. That's all for today. Thank you for watching Education News Network. For more such videos, do log on to our website, theenn.com, and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Signing off, this is Nitya.